The biggest concern about testosterone therapy for probably as long as 70 years is the fear that testosterone therapy may cause prostate cancer or may cause a hidden cancer to grow quickly. Um, this really has been an axiomatic foundational concept in oncology going back to the 1940s. In fact, though, the data today, modern data, do not support that. And so what we see now is that in uh, longitudinal studies with over 3,000 men with prostate cancer, over 6,000 age-matched controls uh, followed in a global pooled uh, study, uh, there was no relationship whatsoever between the risk of developing prostate cancer and any of several hormone levels, including total testosterone, free testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, or other hormones, including estrogen. Specifically, men with the highest levels of androgens were at no greater risk of developing cancer than men in the lowest uh, categories. Uh, there also are uh, meta a meta-analysis published by CUI, CUI, and co-workers that looked at 22 placebo-controlled trials. Uh, men who received testosterone compared to men who received placebo had no increased risk of prostate cancer and no increased risk of developing a PSA greater than 4 nanograms per uh, milliliter, which is our standard cut point for indicating it's time to do a biopsy. These are all very reassuring data. I've spent over 20 years investigating and researching this particular topic, and it's amazing to go back in time and see where this idea came from. In fact, what it started with is a gentleman named Charles Huggins, who published in 1941 a paper in which he removed the testicles, which we call castration, in men with metastatic prostate cancer. They didn't have the blood marker PSA then, they had another one called acid phosphatase, but it worked in more or less a similar fashion. And what he found is that in these men with advanced metastatic disease, when they did the castration to lower testosterone, the acid phosphatase did go down. And what Huggins wrote is that they also gave testosterone injections to men, and in all cases, the acid phosphatase went up. Well, that sounded bad, and certainly did when I started reading that paper, but uh, when you look through it carefully, what you find is he only gave injections to three of these men. Of those three men, he only gave results for two of those men. One of those men had already undergone surgery to remove the testicles, which today we understand puts him in a separate category, special category, which we call androgen-deprived. And in the end, the general rule that testosterone is dangerous for prostate cancer comes from Huggins, and was based on one patient who received testosterone for only 14 days. Not enough to be able to tell anything. In retrospect, it's easy to understand why a new discovery might become overinterpreted. And back in the 1940s and 50s, there was so little testosterone being used that there was no clinician to say, now hold on a second, I've got hundreds of these men, this can't be true, because nobody had that experience. Today, we do have that experience, we do have research, and the evidence now, I think, is quite clear that there is no evidence to support the idea that testosterone causes prostate cancer or that it contributes to rapid growth of prostate cancer.